Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. And at the top of the list, no restraining order to block the NCAA's NIL recruiting ban. But on the eve of National Signing Day, a judge still finds some merit in the lawsuit against that rule. You know, last week we told you how the University of Tennessee is pushing back against an NCAA investigation into those name, image, and likeness deals connected with UT players. The states of Tennessee and Virginia jumped in with a lawsuit and asked a federal court to put the rule on hold, arguing that the ban stops players from negotiating big money deals at the point when they have the most leverage. Judge Clifton Corker, in an opinion put out just a few moments ago, found that the NIL recruiting ban likely does harm competition in the college football labor market, but the harm could be put right by a financial payout after a trial if the states win. So there's no justification for an immediate block. Since this does not settle the larger issue about NIL and recruiting, we'll have to keep watching how the case plays out in court. Now, there is a hearing scheduled for next Tuesday. Also today, Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn from right here in Tennessee reintroduced a bill put together along with New Jersey Democrat Cory Booker aiming for increased accountability for NCAA investigations. We want to make certain that due process is protected for our student athletes. They work hard and they have given years of commitment to practice and to honing that craft and we want them to have the best experience as a student athlete and scholar. Of course we'll break down what this bill would mean moving forward coming up for you tonight at 11 o'clock. Two major developments coming out of a deadly shooting. Tonight, we know the name of the victim and more about the man accused. We'll start there with the suspect, Daniel Arwood, charged now with first-degree murder. According to court documents, Arwood had been fired from his job at a facility where Knox County school buses are managed. That same paperwork shows that Arwood had been living in a room at the warehouse but was supposed to have moved out by Monday when the shooting happened. And the report includes a witness account to police stating that Arwood and the victim, his former boss, were talking in the parking lot before the shooting. As we told you yesterday, police say Arwood drove away from the facility after the shooting and was later spotted by police, leading to a chase and Arwood running off into the woods. The court paperwork claims officers found a shotgun in Arwood's car and that Arwood had two shotgun shells with him, similar to the ones found at the scene of the shooting. The other big revelation, the name of the victim. Aaron Russell. Today we found out Russell was a beloved bus driver. We spoke today with Russell's brother, Christopher, telling us Aaron was known for helping others and was living his dream. If driving buses is your dream job, then you do that. So, so um, I, know, I, don't, I don't know too many people who, 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 uh, who still have that light in their eyes to be doing their dream job, you know, and actually love doing their dream job at 29 years old when his life got cut short. He was a, literally a grown kid. You know what I mean? A grown, adult, mature kid. And I feel like uh, that was uh, needed for the kids for sure to be able to see something like that. Christopher Russell tells us his brother was also a father. He wanted to thank the community for its support during this time. Next here at 7, big reactions to the expansion of school vouchers laid out in Governor Lee's State of the Strait Address last night. Already, the plan to take the voucher program statewide has prompted protests really from both sides of the aisle. Education has the power to change the trajectory of a child's life forever. Hey, hey, ho, ho, those scam vouchers have got to go. As we told you, the governor wants to expand educational choices by giving out vouchers that would help pay private school tuition costs. Critics speaking up during the state of the state last night and protesting on the front steps of the Capitol today say they don't want more public dollars being diverted away from public schools. It's not just passionate audience members questioning this measure either. Several school boards across the state have signed resolutions to reject the school voucher plan. That includes Anderson County, along with Clinton City and Oak Ridge City Schools. And as we told you last night, Knox County Schools is now considering a resolution to do the same. Meanwhile, groups like Americans for Prosperity Tennessee are showing up in support for school choice. The East Tennessee Freedom Fighters took a bus to the state capitol today to fight for parents' rights. And we should note, a bill has been filed for the voucher scholarship program, but lawmakers say it's nowhere near the final version and will likely change in the next few weeks. Our next Big 7 story, hearing from the mother of a woman killed in a shooting. 
Just yesterday, we learned about the tragic death, a woman hit and killed by a bullet that was fired from a neighboring apartment. Happened Saturday evening at the Sutherland Square Apartments just off Sutherland Avenue in West Knoxville. According to KPD, 40-year-old Cynthia Brown, also known as Cindy, was hit by a stray bullet from a neighboring apartment while she was inside her home. She was transported to UT Medical Center where she was pronounced dead around 1.45 in the morning Sunday. Now we spoke with Brown's mother, Angela Rogers, in North Carolina earlier. She says this has been like a dream that she just wants to wake up from. It'd be a lot easier for me to comprehend, you know, if it was natural causes. But to think that reckless gun violence took my daughter from me. You know, I want to be my daughter's voice and every mother's voice that that they never have to endure a nightmare like this. Rogers added she hopes the Knox County DA's office chooses to file charges in relation to this incident. We did reach out to the DA's office earlier. They have no comment at this time. A grim milestone in our next Big 7 story tonight. Today marks one year since Lisa Edwards died after being told to leave a Knoxville hospital and then was taken into custody by police. You may remember the encounter documented in some of this body camera video. Edwards had been complaining of abdominal pain after flying from Knoxville, from, uh, flying to Knoxville from Rhode Island. She was taken to Blunt Memorial Hospital, discharged, then went to Fort Sanders, discharged again, but refused to leave. Security guards confronted Edwards. Police were called in, and as Edwards' condition appeared to decline, she was eventually put into a KPD cruiser where she passed out on the way to jail. The family speaking out last year, calling the police negligent. Anyone with any, any common sense could tell that something was going wrong with uh, Miss Edwards at the time and that she needed uh, medical attention. But there's definitely a few things that, that are called into question here. And it's my belief that the hospital uh, is directly liable along with the police department. As we've reported, Lisa Edwards' son filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the Knoxville Police Department. The police officers involved, Fort Sanders Regional Medical Center and several others, saying Edwards was denied care that could have saved her life. And we're keeping up with this lawsuit. And of course, we're going to let you know what happens next in this case. Next on our Big 7 list, another chance for neighbors to learn about the revamp effort for downtown Maryville. You know, we've been telling you about leaders working on a downtown master plan to make changes to accommodate that growth. A consultant team was brought in to look at opportunities for land use, transportation, economic development, even public art. Right now, the final plan open house is going on so the consultants can share those recommendations. Uh, this is one of the last opportunities for the public to share input on these decisions about the future of downtown Maryville. And we'll take a look at some of those recommendations for change coming up later on tonight. We wrap up our Big 7 list with a, a let's call it a, a big arrival, if you will. It's a new airline coming to McGee Tyson Airport. Avello Airlines announcing an exclusive nonstop service between Knoxville and Southern Connecticut. Beginning May 9th, Avello will operate a route twice weekly on Thursdays and Sundays with the Boeing Next Generation 737 aircraft. The one-way fares between McGee Tyson and Tweed New Haven Airport, which is about two hours outside New York City, start at $62. And you can make reservations on Avello's website. I think uh, the people who uh, live in southern Connecticut and the greater New York area will have yet another way to get to and from the Knoxville region um, in a direct flight that's very affordable. We are excited to just bring more options to the business and travel community of, the, of Knoxville and all of East Tennessee. Velo started in 2021 with just three planes and now has a total of 16 and flies to 40 destinations. In 2023, the airline had the lowest flight cancellation rate in the U.S. airline industry and ranked number two in on-time reliability.